hello everybody uh today i'm going to go over with you how to make a classic granny square so this is what we have here you can see that um we've got three rounds and what it ends up looking like are just a, a bunch of little separate squares and granny squares are great because they're really quick and easy to make up and once you have a few you can it's like quilting you can put them together any way you want to to make anything you want so this one i made using a five millimeter hook and the germantown worsted weight yarn uh, in store we actually have small balls of the worsted weight germantown uh, which is great for these projects because you only need a little bit you don't need a full skein and it's much more fun to make them when you've got color changes throughout although you do always have the option of making a solid color all right so what you will need for this is a crochet hook as i said i'm using a five millimeter hook because i like working with uh five millimeter and worsted weight but you can technically use any size hook and any size yarn you will just end up with a granny square that is a different size so we are going to start with for me our yellow and i'm going to show you how to make a magic loop and this is how we start our granny square so you're going to take the end of your yarn I'm gonna wrap it across your two fingers once and then back around again but this time you're gonna go across the first strand of yarn to make an X whoop let's get that in frame there okay and then you're gonna take your crochet hook you're gonna go under the first strand and hook that second strand there making a loop around your hook and then you have your magic loop so I'm going to go over that one more time you take the end of your yarn oh, if I can you wrap it across the back of your fingers once and then twice making an X take your hook under the first strand hooking the second and pulling up okay so there we have our magic loop um, there are other ways to make this center by creating a chain and joining it together. I like the magic loop best because uh, it allows you to adjust the size of that middle loop as you go, okay? Which you'll see in a bit. So our first step is to chain three. And as you're going, you just want to make sure that you're, if you're crocheting with your right hand, your left hand is holding close to the crochet hook. You'll have more control this way. So to make a chain, you yarn over and pull through the loop. And we're going to do this a total of three times. So I just did it once. Here's the second chain and the third chain just like that okay and then we are going to make two double crochets into the loop so when I say the loop I mean our magic loop down here and how we do a double crochet is by yarning over putting our hook through the loop yarn over again pull up and then we yarn over again pull through the first two loops on the hook okay so you're left with two loops now you're going to yarn over again and pull through the last two loops and that is one double crochet so we need a second one so we're going to do exactly the same thing again yarn over put through the loop yarn over again pull up yarn over pull through two loops 
yarn over, pull through two loops. And there we go. That is our chain three, our first double crochet, and our second double crochet. So now we are going to chain three again. You'll start to see a pattern. It's mostly just doing the same thing over and over again. So we've chained three. Then we actually have to do three double crochets into the loop. So just like we did last time, we yarn over, put our hook through the loop, yarn over again, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now, as you're going, if you notice that your hook is getting caught, remember to twist your hook down as you pull through. Okay, and then you can do that just by sort of rotating your fingers on this side. What happens if you don't, if you leave your hook facing you, as you pull down, you're going to catch the loop that you actually want to pull through. But if you twist it down so that the hook is actually facing that joining point right there, it won't catch on the loop and you'll be able to pull through smoothly. So that is two double crochets right there. So I've got to do a third. So one more here. And there we go. Now, you can start to see what's happening. I've got a group of three double crochets. The beginning three chain kind of acts as that third double crochet at the beginning. And then I've got a chain that is turning into a corner. All right. So we are just going to do that again. So we're going to start at the step here, which was chaining three. So we're making our second corner. And then we do our three double crochets into the loop. Again, three chains and then three double crochets into the loop. So as you can see what's happening to me is that my little tail here of my magic loop is starting to get worked under. So I'm just going to pull on this a little bit and as you can see as I pull my loop gets smaller but I still have to work into that loop. So I don't want it too small, but I also don't want to end up working completely over this uh, end strand because then I won't be able to tighten it if it gets lost. So I tightened that loop a little bit so that this was long enough that I can tuck it behind my work and kind of just hold it off to the side with my other fingers. So back to where we were. I've just chained three, so now I have three double crochets into the loop. There we go. And now we do a last chain three. And then we do a slip stitch to the top of the starting chain three. So we've got our starting, we had two double crochets. This is the starting chain three. So you can look for the V's. That's how we recognize our chains and our stitches. So the first V is here, so that's chain one. Second V is here, that's chain two. Third V is here. That's chain three. So that's where our hook is going to go. Right into there. 
if it will cooperate. There we are. And then we're going to do a slip stitch. So what that means is that we yarn over, pull through that loop, and here what we would normally do for a single crochet is to yarn over and pull through those two loops. But for a slip stitch, we do not yarn over. We actually hook that first loop on the hook and pull it through the second loop. Okay. And there we have our square. Now our square looks a little bit wonky. It will look better once you tighten that magic loop. All right, but you can see my chains here were a little looser than the other one. So that corner is a little bit bigger. It really doesn't matter at this point because we're going to continue working through the rounds and by the end, you won't even be able to see that corner anymore. Okay. And the other thing is that once you're done, you can block it and that will help with any size differentiations that happen throughout the process. So. We're gonna go on to round two. If you want to continue with the same color yarn that you have, you're more than welcome to do that. You'll end up uh, with a solid color granny square. To get the color changes that we are doing, we are at this point going to change to our second color. So I'm just gonna loosen this loop on my hook a little bit so that it's uh, less easy to pull out accidentally. I'm gonna take out my hook, I'm gonna grab my second color. I'm gonna move on to this one here. Give myself some yarn to work with. And then I'm gonna pick up my main one again, put my hook back through, and just loop that second color across. Okay, you don't need to knot it. You just need to loop it and pull that through. And then you're gonna pull back on that first color there so that it tightens like that and then holding that first color and the short tail of that second color behind your work you're going to take the working tail of the new color and tighten it around your hook okay so now we are working in our second color on our second round and the first thing we're going to do is chain four so we've got one two, three, four. Now remember too, as you're chaining, as you're working, the closer your left hand thumb is holding to your hook, the more control you will have. So don't be afraid to use your other fingers to move as you need. Okay, and now we are going to do three double crochets, but this time, we are working into our chain three corner. Okay, that corner of the square that is made by three chains, hence why it is called a chain three space, generally. Um, okay, so double crochet, yarn over, put through that space, yarn over again, pull up, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, so now, as you do this, it will want to go to the loosest part of that chain, which is going to be the edge. It's okay wherever it ends up at this point, because as you go, it will kind of move itself over. But one thing you can do now, actually, is just move it over to the far side, because we've got a lot that we're going to work into this corner here, and we need space. So that's one of three double crochets. Now we do a second a and a third. And then we make another corner for this row. So we chain three and three more double crochets into that same space. Okay, and now you can see that we've got the corner there. 
All right. And then to travel the space of the edge, we are just going to chain one. It's going to make our line a little longer, and then we are going to do exactly the same thing into this next three chain space. So three double crochets. Chain three, and then three double crochets. As you can see, you'll start to see how we're getting our square again. Okay, and there's a clear pattern here where we've got three double crochets into this space along each edge, and we chain to make space. Okay. So again, to travel that edge, we're going to chain one and then three double crochets again into the three chain space. <laughs> so this last one, we are only going to do two double crochets because the first three chains that we made at the beginning of this are going to act as a double crochet. And that fourth chain was the single chain that travels that edge. So we're going to take our hook and again we're going to find the third chain. So we go one, two, three. Right up in here. There we go. And we do a slip stitch. So again we do not yarn over, pull over the first loop, Yes, through the yes, second yes, loop. Yes. All right, so that is our second row right there. We are going to change the color now. But before we do that, we're going to get rid of our first color of yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that loop out a bit and we're going to cut this yarn here. At the end, we will work the ends of the yarn into the piece, but mostly we just want to get rid of this so that it's not in our way. We don't have too many strands of yarn hanging around all at once. So put your hook back there, pull it a little tighter, and we grab our third color. And we're going to change the color exactly the same way as we did before. So we loop it around our hook, pull through, and pull that first color, or I guess that second color, tight. Then you're going to keep that yarn behind, take the short end, also holding it behind with your other finger. And then with the long working end, you're going to pull tight. All right, so now we chain three. And we do two double crochets into now the chain one space. So before we were working into our chain three space, which we will still do in this row, but now we have extra spaces. So it's not just at the corners, it's also along the edge. And because we chained one to make this space, it is called a chain one space. So we have our three chains right here. That is going to act as one double crochet. So we are going to do only two double crochets into this space. And there we go. Now this will look a little wonky. It won't be grouped quite as nicely together, but it will sort itself out by the end and I'll show you how to kind of make it a little bit tighter, but we're going to leave it as it is for now. 
Now, again, we want to travel along the edge, so we chain one, and then we do three double crochets into that corner. So, we've clearly got a pattern going, right? Every corner gets a total of six double crochets. When we want to create a corner space, we chain three, as we're going to do right now. When we want to travel across the edge of the work, we chain one to make a chain one space. And on those edge chain one spaces, we do three double crochets. Okay, and here we are about to travel across the edge, so we chain one. And then our next space is a chain one space, so it gets three double crochets. Chain one to travel across the edge and three double crochets into the corner. chain three and three double crochets into the corner. All right. Now we are going to chain one to travel across this space and we are going to slip stitch into the top of this first double crochet. So it's going to be the third chain that we made. So we've got our 1V there. It's harder to see in the darker yarn. 1V here, 1V there and 1V right up top here. So we're gonna pop our hook through that, pull through, whoops. And then because it's a slip stitch, we don't yarn over, we hook that first loop and pull it through the second. And there, is our third row of our granny square. Look at that. So here I am, this is where I stop. I have a granny square that is the size that I want it to be. So I'm going to show you how to tie off. Now there are a few different ways to do it. I'll show you how I do it. So basically I chain, pull through that, but then pinching that yarn across my hook, I pull that tight. And then to make a double knot, I do the same thing, chain and then pull tight. Now I've got a lot of yarn here. So holding that knot tight, I'm going to pull back to shorten that loop there. I'm going to take my hook out and once I've got it about, again, between that inch and inch and a half long, I say that's good enough, and take my scissors and I'm just going to cut the end of that. And then the yarn that is still attached to the ball, I just pull out and we're done. If you wanted to make a granny square that is bigger than this. You can always work with a larger hook, work with larger yarn, or just keep going and make more rows. And it's the same pattern every time. You work into your chain one spaces with three double crochets. 
you travel across the edge with one chain space and in each corner you do a pattern of three double crochets three chains to make the corner and another three double crochets as you go and as you make more rows you will have more chain one spaces along each edge and so you just make sure that you work into each of those chain one spaces as you go so now we've got all these strands of yarn on the back of our work we're going to work those in i pop my hook through one of those uh, stitches up at the top and pull that piece of yarn through now because we've got a big chunky knot on this one i want to pull it nice and tight so that the knot sits sort of on the inside of that stitch then i'm going to turn it and i'm going to do the same thing but working from the other side so i pull that yarn through again whoops didn't quite catch it and i'll do that one more time to bring it back to the back of the work and then I'm going to cut what remains fairly close to the work itself while still being careful not to cut the piece and there you go now that piece of yarn is worked in you can't see it from the front here and you can't really see it from the back either so as I talked about when we did that last row and we started with our chain that was going to act as a double crochet and it kind of stands on its own a little bit one way to make that a little bit better is to take that second color yarn that that color was pulled through and pull it nice and tight and you can see just by pulling on that yarn kind of brings the bottom of that chain closer to the other double crochets so while we've got that nice and tight, now we are going to work that yarn into the piece. So I'm going to find a nice space. I think this is where my hook is going to go. Again, there's no real science to this. And just wherever your hook will fit. I'm going to give it another tug there to make sure that it's staying nice and tight. And then I'm going to find another space for that yarn to go and pull it behind to the back and that is actually all I'm going to do for that one so I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to do the same thing for the last three strands of yarn that I have and there you have your granny square so as I said before if at this point in time your square is a little wonky or a little lopsided that is fine what you're going to do at this point is block it so you want to wet your granny square and pin it in place as it dries so t-pins are great for this um, if you don't have uh, blocking mats uh, I in the past have used towels to lay it down on top of and pin into and you just want to pin it into the shape that you want it to be so that as it dries it dries in that shape and then it will hold better and once you've made one you can see how quick that was you can make a hundred more and make a bag or make a sweater or a scarf or a vest there are so many project ideas uh, that can be made just out of simple granny squares. So have fun with this one and stay tuned for next month when we do our February granny square. Thanks for watching.